ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار Indeed the praise is for Allah we praise him we seek his help we seek his forgiveness we seek refuge with Allah from the evils that are within ourselves and from our bad deeds whosoever Allah guides there's no one that can lead this person astray and whomsoever Allah leads astray there is no guide for him i bear witness that none has the right to be worshiped except for Allah who is along with our partners and i bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is the servant of Allah and the last messenger of Allah to all of mankind o you who believe fear Allah with the right that he should be feared with and do not die in the shura muslims on the deen of al islam O mankind fear your lord who has created you from a single person made in adam alayhi salam and created from him his mate meaning hawa and from them to scatter countless men and women throughout the earth and fear allah from who you demand your mutual rights and do not cut off the do not cut off the relation with the wombs that have bore you indeed allah is a watcher over you O you who believe Fear Allah and say that which is correct and upright in order that Allah may rectify for you your deeds and forgive you of your sins and whosoever obeys Allah and his messenger has achieved a tremendous achievement as to what follows certainly the most truthful speech is the book of Allah and the best guidance is the guidance of the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam And the most evil of the affairs are the newly invented matters in the religion. And every newly invented matter in the religion is innovation. And every innovation is going astray and every going astray is, is in the hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from the brothers and the sisters their fasting. Their fast on the day of Ashura. And for those who fasted. the ninth of al muharram and for those who are fasting today may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept the fast from us all and place it upon our scales of good i mean we know that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam mentioned afdalu siyam ba'd ramadan shahr allah al muharram that the best fast after fasting in the month of ramadan is fasting in the month of Allah al-Muharram. 
the statement of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam establishes that this entire month, the month of Al Muharram, it is encouraged for us to fast as much as we can, except that we do not fast the entire month. For the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam never fasted an entire month except for the month of Ramadan. But we do as much as we can as it relates to fasting during this month. And we should not leave off fasting because we fasted the day of Ashura. As some of the Muslims, they fast Ashura and then they don't fast any other days of the month. As if Ashura is the only day that is recommended for us to fast during this month of Al-Muharram. Rather, the days of Al-Muharram are recommended for us to fast, except that Ashura is the best of them. And what is learned from this, the importance of the continuation of good. The importance of being patient upon doing good. And not just doing good on one occasion or during a season of the year or time of the year. And then leaving off good during the other times of the year. Or during the other days of the year. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions, وَاسْبِرُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الصَّابِرِينَ And be patient, indeed Allah is with those who are patient. Patience, barakallahu feekum, is three categories of patience. الصَّبْرُ عَلَى طَاعَةِ اللَّهِ وَالصَّبْرُ عَنْ مَعْسِيَةِ اللَّهِ وَالصَّبْرُ عَلَى أَقْدَارِ اللَّهِ المؤلمة. Being patient upon being obedient to Allah. Being patient upon staying away from disobedience. And being patient upon that which Allah has decreed, which has discomfort and hardships in. But the focus today is a sabru ala ta'atillah, a sabru ala al khair. Being patient upon being obedient to Allah. Being patient upon the good. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned, أَحَبُّ الْأَعْمَالِ إِلَى اللَّهِ أَدْوَمُهَا وَإِنْخَلَّ أو كَمَا قَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ The most beloved of the actions to Allah are those actions that are done consistently, even if they are small in amount. Yes, walhamdulillah, we fasted Ashura, we fasted the day before or the day after. Being different from the Yahud, who only fasted Ashura. But what about the other days of Al Muharram? Should we leave off fasting the other days just because we fasted Ashura? Just because Ashura is a day of great virtue, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He will remove from the individual the sins that He committed in the previous year. Does that mean that we should no longer fast? The rest of the days of Al-Muharram? What about the white days? The 13th, the 14th, and the 15th? What about fasting on Mondays and Thursdays? This still remains in this month of Al-Muharram. This still continues in the month of Al-Muharram. Or is the focus only on the one day? To get the one reward, and then after that is back to business as usual. Our deen doesn't cultivate us to be like this. Look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated fasting six days of shawwal after fasting the month of Ramadan. The lesson in, in that is the continuation of good. Look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated four raka'ah before dhuhr or two. Two raka'ah after dhuhr, two raka'ah after maghrib, two raka'ah after isha, two before fajr. Not just the obligatory prayers, but the voluntary acts are legislated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran and upon the tongue of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so that we are in the habit of doing good consistently. So we are in the habit of doing good consistently. And this takes patience. And this takes patience. But if you are patient upon the good, 
then this is how you will earn the love of Allah. Wallahu yuhibbu sabirin. And Allah, He loves those who are patient. A lot of times, when we see these verses about patience, the first thing that comes to mind is being patient upon calamities and being patient upon hardships. And without a doubt, this is a part of patience. This is a great part of patience. That when hardships come, when difficulties come, that we do not give up hope and we do not lose focus, that we remain upon being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bearing the hardship, bearing the calamity, turning to Allah with repentance. A lot of times when people hear patience, the focus is on this aspect of patience. Being patient upon calamities, being patient upon the hardships. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to the woman who lost her child, and she was crying at the grave of her child, he said, Ittaqila. Waspiri. Fear Allah and be patient. And then she said, Ilayka anni, get away from me. Fa'innaka lam tusab bi musibati. For you haven't been afflicted with my calamity. And she didn't know that was the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So the Prophet left her alone. He didn't bother her. The people told her that was the messenger of Allah you said that to. So she felt regret. And she felt bad for her statement. It was not befitting to say the likes of these words to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She didn't realize it was the Prophet. And she didn't intend to be disrespectful to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She was overcome with sadness. So she went to the home of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she mentioned, O oh, Messenger of Allah, I didn't know it was you. And the Prophet said to her, Inna sabra fi sadmatil ula. Indeed, patience is at the first stroke of the calamity. So yes, being patient upon calamities is a great affair. But don't overlook being patient upon doing good. Because that's just as great. That's just as important as being patient upon the calamities. Being patient upon doing good. So when we hear the statement that Allah, He loves those who are patient, this is not just for those who are patient upon calamities. This also includes those who are patient upon doing good. And those who are patient upon staying away from the haram. For this takes patience. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's with those who are patient. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He loves those who are patient. And patience is beautiful. Aqulu qawli hadha astaghfirullah Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salam ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursaleen Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi yajma'een amma ba'd Qala Allah Azza wa Jal Inna Allah ma'a sabirin Indeed Allah is with those who are patient when Allah is with an individual, this means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is aiding the person and protecting the person. And this is for the believers. That Allah is with the patient, meaning those who are patient from amongst the believers. And when Allah is with the believers, Allah He is with them by aiding them and supporting them and helping them and protecting them. So being consistent upon doing good, it brings about the victory from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It brings about the help and the support from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all of us, we are in need of the help of Allah. All of us are in need of the protection of Allah. Because the believer has many enemies. Those we know and can see and the enemies that we cannot see. 
from the shayateen, Iblis and his army. Without the protection of Allah, we will be victims. Without the protection of Allah and the help of Allah and the victory from Allah, we will be losers. We can't win without Allah's help. We can't win and be successful without the success being given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be with us, it's important that we are patient upon doing good. It's important we are patient in staying away from the haram. It's important that we are patient upon the calamities and the hardships and that we do not lose hope. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions, فَاسْبِرْ كَمَا صَبَرَ عُلُوا عَزَمْ مِنَ الرُّسْلُ Be patient. Like those men of firm resolve from the messengers were patient. When we look at the Prophet Noah alayhi salam, look at his patience upon good. 950 years calling to La ilaha illallah. He didn't get bored. He didn't get tired of giving da'wah. He continued to call the people to la ilaha illallah. A beautiful example of being patient upon good. So don't get bored of doing good. Don't get tired of doing good. Rather we should be tired of sinning. We should be tired of disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're going to get tired... Of anything, let's get tired of being sinners. Let's get tired of being individuals who violate the prescribed limits of Allah. Let's get tired of that. But don't get tired of doing good. Because even the small amount of good is acknowledged by Allah and appreciated by Allah and rewarded by Allah. The smallest amount of good. So don't get tired of doing good. Look at the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. He was patient upon doing good. Patient upon establishing the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the earth. Calling his family to la ilaha illallah. Calling his people to la ilaha illallah. And even in the face of threats. Even in the face of persecution, he remained firm upon doing good. And even after leaving that land, he continued upon doing good, carrying out the commandment of Allah. And when he seen in the dream to sacrifice his son, he went forward to carry out the commandment of Allah, which is doing good. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he established the building of the Kaaba with his son Ismail. Ibrahim alayhi salam gave advice to his son Ismail to change the threshold of his door because his wife was insuitable for him. All of this is an indication and all of this are examples of Ibrahim alayhi salam doing good. When we read the stories of the prophets and the messengers, we see their consistency upon doing good. The Prophet Musa alayhi salam, going to Fir'aun, calling Fir'aun to la ilaha illallah, in the face of, in the threat of persecution and death, it did not stop him. He went forward and carried out the commandment of Allah. Ibrahim alayhi salam, establishing the tawheed of Allah amongst Bani Israel. Ibrahim alayhi salam, Commanding Bani Israel with the commandments of Allah. Patience upon doing good. He didn't get bored. He didn't get tired of doing good. He didn't get tired of conveying the message of Allah to do to Bani Israel. Even though there was from amongst Bani Israel those who were disobedient and arrogant. Those who were in opposition to the commandments of Allah. This didn't stop him. He continued to do good. Isa alayhi salam, another one, calling to la ilaha illallah, establishing the tawheed of Allah in the face of persecution. 
in the face of threats, in the face of slander, that he is a bastard child and his mother was a whore. It didn't stop him from doing good. It didn't stop him from carrying out the commandments of Allah. And then when Isa a.s. returns towards the end of time, he's going to continue to do the good. Being patient upon the good. Carrying out the commandments of Allah. And then the best of the examples are beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the best example of being patient upon good. Throughout his 23 years of prophethood, all we see in the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was him being upon good from the beginning to the end. We do not find in the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he did good for a period of time and then he stopped. And then he started upon a path of evil. And then he went back to being good. And then he stopped doing good. And then he was upon a path of evil. And then he went back to being good. We don't find in the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this type of inconsistency. Good, evil, good, evil, good, evil. Rather, we find in the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam patience and consistency upon doing good. He is the example for us, and the prophets and the messengers they are our examples. So please take advantage of that which remains from the month of Al Muharram, and don't leave off fasting just because you fasted Ashura. How do you know? For a fact that Allah has even accepted that fast yesterday. We don't know. We don't know if Allah has accepted our fast. We pray and hope that Allah has accepted from us our fast. But we must continue to do good. We must continue to fast the best fast after the month of Ramadan. The fast of the month of Allah Al-Muharram. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us our good. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those who are patient and consistent upon doing good. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for our shortcomings and protect us from evil and to be with us in all of our affairs. Aqulu qawli hadha astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa subhanaka allahum wa bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha ila ant astaghfiruka wa atubi ilaik. Aqim as-salam.